Okay, so I'm going to show you how to find sources and first work through a research question. So here, my research question is something that I'm interested in reading research on, which is really probably the most important way to choose a research topic for this final paper. You want to be interested in the topic. Um, you want to have some prior knowledge even. It would make it easier to start um, finding sources if you already know a little bit about the topic. So I went ahead and wrote out my initial question asked, how do multimedia tools affect how an online student learns? And you'll see I went back and I uh, changed that a little bit just to make it read what I think more clearly here. And that, that is, how do multimedia tools affect online learners? So just once again, just showing you guys my thought process, um, presented a question and then went back and revised that a bit. So this is all kind of working through ideas. You're in the first stage of writing this final research paper. Another question that came to mind is, should online instructors be required to use, oh, X that out. should online instructors be required to use multimedia tools? So just another question that kind of goes along with the first one. So it's okay to have more than one, especially if you want to, um, you know, connect two ideas. So should we use these tools in online classes and should instructors be required to use them? And... For the keywords database search, so I know the, the databases can sometimes prove a little um, frustrating, so I just wanted to walk you all through how I would perform a database search. And then I'm also going to show you Google Scholar, which you're free to uh, use, but just make sure that the sources that you're using are coming from scholarly journals. And a way to access those journals through Google Scholar, you'll need to be signed into the database through EFSC anyway, so I'm just going to show you that step first. So go to the library and it brings you to this home page and then I always go to advanced search. So that way instead of one box, I now have four boxes that I can uh, divide my key terms up into. So this makes it easier if you have a question, then you can kind of use multiple key terms. If you were to just search, you know, the question out flat, um, how do multimedia tools affect online learners, then you probably won't have many sources because it's asking a question instead of keywords. So these are the keywords that I just quickly came up with, uh, pretty much taking right out of my question, just keywords from your question. And that's how you know even if, you, if you're on the right track with a question, you should have a few different keywords involved. And here in parentheses, uh, I just wrote other words that I could use in place. You know, instead of online courses, I could say e-learning or virtual courses. So those are just other terms that I might use to perform other searches. Um, there will be different articles that are found by searching with different words. So just another thought there. And also, you know, having something like learning versus learn versus learner, they will have different source results very slightly. You know, you might find 70 results for learn, 77 for learning. So play around with the endings as well. Um, so here I can find articles that, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that I feel like can go along with my research topic. So this one looks like it, student engagement and distant ed education. So we're all in this virtual world. How do we kind of stay connected different on different time schedules and whatnot? So how can multimedia tools help in uh, connect, keeping people connected? So you'll have to be logged in and to, to view these articles. And the user, Library user is the B number that you're assigned, and then the password should be your birthday, month, month, day, day, year, year. So Google Scholar just will pretty much search very sim similar to Google, but it'll find reliable sources instead of just random blogs and things that a fourth grader may post and you don't know. And, you know, so we want to keep it um, academic, scholarly sources and journals give us a more reliable option there. So... I'm going to go ahead and copy my research question and put that in the put that in the search bar. So this is nice because you can actually have a full question, perform the search, and 
as you can see, um, it will produce results that are what you're looking for, like the first one, a case study of Blackboard. If anyone was at Eastern Florida last year, that was the learning management system we used to use. Now we're on Canvas, but um, so that might be something I'm interested in reading since I had experience teaching on that. Um, that would go along with my research question. And here on the right, this one is set up as a PDF, so you could just click on the PDF and you could save it to your computer and come back and read it later if you're just going to you know, take this time to perform some research. Um, I like to save it either way because then you can highlight and take notes and do that directly on the PDF. So you, if you're someone who doesn't mind reading on the computer, then you can save some ink and you don't have to print it all out. There you go. And then you could always add a note as well. So that's what this little button beside the highlighting tool is for. And then if you add that here, then now I can add a comment. So this tutorial should have made it a little bit more clear how to use the databases in the Google Scholar. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, also use Discussion 10 to really just start working through ideas. If you want to do something like I did, um, where I actually put a couple questions and even the keywords, if you're not really finding articles, you can let us know what kind of keywords you're using in your search and maybe uh, I can give you different su suggestions for that. Um, even if you do find sources, if you want to just provide the keywords, it might help your peers kind of figure out what are good search techniques and how to find articles. So one last thing, just remember that a lot of these articles, if you click on the title, there is a citation tool and it, you can choose MLA. Um, just make sure, I know I, sometimes I see students using the APA format. I think I logged out here, but um, just make sure you choose MLA. I also put a short tutorial on the announcement board to let everyone um, go through just the basic MLA formatting so that no one loses points for that. Um, and if you have any source questions on how to, how to cite something, just let me know. So let me quickly just show you the citation tool. And if you are sitting for a while, uh, the library will reset you, so just log back in. Oh, the other option, you could always use e-videos e as well. It doesn't have to just be articles. Okay, so something like EBSCOhost, um, they do have apps even for smartphones, so in case you're on the go and you feel like researching on your phone or your tablet, you can look up an EBSCOhost app. Um, and over here, this is where you have some tools like the citation tool, or you can email yourself the article just to, to make sure you have it. Um, sometimes thumb drives go missing, so it's nice to just have things emailed or saved on, uh, on the computer. The citation tool will give you citations in different formats, so make sure you go to MLA, and then you could copy that. And um, I do see, sometimes see people using APA, so just make sure you're using MLA. And um, if you have any questions, refer to the handbook or the Purdue Online Writing Owl. Now I've shown this before. And of course, email me if you have questions that can't be answered by looking at some of these resources. So the Purdue Online Writing Owl is a really good resource. All right, thank you.